Welcome to Wine Soundtrack South Africa. Listen to the passion with which producers narrate their winery and their world. In 30 Answers, discover their stories, personalities and passions. Hello friends and listeners of Wine Soundtrack. This is Marena Kahlo and today I am sitting with Ntsiki Biela from Azelina Wines. A very warm welcome Ntsiki. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Thank you for having me. Um, I'm from Wazulu Natal, um, from a region where actually there was no wine. I didn't grow up making any wine. I didn't see anything that said wine except ciders that I thought was wine. And for some interesting reason, life led me to the wine industry through a scholarship from South African Airways. And here I am, many years later. Many years later. And here we're sitting in a brand new opened tasting room. Tell us more about the tasting room and where it's located. So we actually here it's at Devon Bosch, which is on Botlari Road here in Stellenbosch. Um, this development it's actually giving us access to have feet from different aspects of people coming to do different things. Um, but also because we've got followers, it's been it's been a long journey to try and look for a space, for a home, for a place where we can actually have visitors, people who can come and sample and taste our wines and share uh, who we are. So yeah, it's been a it's been a great I think it's been a great achievement for us. I completely agree, and it's really a lovely tasting room. Uh, open Tuesday till Saturdays by appointment, and uh, yeah, let's start with just wishing you all the best for the future with the tasting room. But I'd like to chat a little bit about your wines. Um, but before we can talk about your wines, it would be interesting to hear your story. You started life in KwaZulu Natal and then you got the scholarship but wine wasn't really your primary interest at first no it was definitely not because i didn't even know its existence so there was going to be no ways to to have it as a, a sort of a something that i want to do so um i wanted to do a chemical engineering that was what i think there was a phase in in, in my time at school and when then we got recruited and being told about a studying agriculture at Stellenbosch University doing viticulture and onology. I was like, oh yeah, sure. You know, but it was really for me about the funding, the scholarship, because my family couldn't afford to take me to varsity. So this was an opportunity. So I took that opportunity and I landed in Stellenbosch, had to study winemaking in Afrikaans, which is a language I didn't know. And yeah, made it. And the rest, as they say, is history. I suppose, in a way, winemaking is a kind of chemical engineering, one can say. Absolutely, it is chemical. It's a lovely chemical engineering. It's an exciting one, the fun side of it. Mm. Yeah. It really is. Um, so, your wines. Tell me, where, where do you get the grapes from? How does it work? Do you have your own land? Do you buy in grapes? So we buying grapes, we don't have a vineyard, we don't have a, a cellar. So we buy grapes, rent a cellar, a cellar space and make our wines and distribute all over the world. Mm. So yeah. Okay. And tell me about your wines. What are they? What, what, what is your style? What do you think uh, we can attribute to them most? So we've got six wines now. When we started, we started with four. Um, so under the Asselina range, we've got our Sauvignon Blanc, we've got Chardonnay, we've got a skin fermented Chenin Blanc, we've got a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Bordeaux style blend. And then we, obviously for us, Asselina was not complete without celebration. So we had to add an MCC so that we like, okay, we've got a celeb, it's a celebratory uh, brand. So that should show in that. And each wine for me, like looking at the Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay and uh, the Chenin, they're all completely different style. We've got Sauvignon Blanc, which is 
fermented in a tank left on the lease. You've got partly wooded Chardonnay, and then you've got a skin fermented Chardonnay. So these are all completely different style, but you can, when you taste through the thread, you can pick up the fruit and all the exciting things in the wine, but also you can tell that as much as, dif- as it's different from each other, it's from the same family. So that's what we have. And then we've got our Cabernet Sauvignon, which um, it's got a little bit of uh, some Petit Vedo. And then we've got our Bordeaux style blend called Umsasane. Umsasane, because one, we, the, the brand itself is rooted in our heritage because I'm really strong on heritage. Um, I love who I am. I love where I come from. I am who I am because of my background. And so, hence, even in our tasting room, there we've got the acacia tree um, as a mural so in our boardroom. And that just to pay a, a tribute to all the things of who we are. The logo of our bottle, it's uh, the calabash, which we use for our traditional beer, but then we added um, grapes in it because we're combining the two cultures. So um, sasa, ne, this it's a Zulu word for the acacia tree, which is an iconic tree in Africa, um, but it's my grandmother's nickname. So the brand itself is named after my grandmother because to pay tribute to the person who has... Um, build the person I am mm. and so for our Bordeaux uh, style blend which is our iconic wine then we're like okay you know what this is actually so you're getting a double dose of my grandma so I it's, like it's my grandma's love yeah yes that's such a that's such a special way of honoring her as well it really yes, really is absolutely. and the name is Lena is that that's her name that's my grandmother's name. Um, I think because I didn't know what it meant. And then, well, through doing some searches and and asking and trying to find out. So it's a woman of nature, a woman of virtue. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a woman you want to be close to. Mm. Yeah. She must be quite a lady. No, she was absolutely. Oh. absolutely. So you've gone from four wines to six. What is your annual production roughly at the moment? We are almost 100,000 bottles, so at 89 and just fluctuate a bit because of, yes, of the market. Um, but I think looking that it's, we are seven years in, we've done very well, you know, we've done very well on our growth. And we are a team of five and working to get the sixth person to join on board. And so even the t- in terms of um, as a team, we, we're growing in all sides. So, yeah. It's quite a story. It really is a story, and it's one that I've been following certainly closely throughout my career in the wine industry, and it's, it, it's one that always puts a smile on my face, I must say. Thank you. Um, in terms of the vineyards that you source your grape from, grapes from, is, uh, do you have any preference for uh, vineyards from specific regions for the different varieties that you work with? What is generally your ethos when it comes to that? So I'm, I'm more of a person with relationships. I believe in relationships. Um, so since I started working as a winemaker, it's been meeting people, making friends, and basically life goes on like that. So even when I started my company, it was um, talking to my friends to say, listen, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. And so the winemakers I work with or the farms I work with, it's farms that have been working with for a long time it's people I know and it's people I trust and it's people that I know they care about me they care about who I am and they always strive for perfection too mm. so like to have that alignment with the person you're working with and um, we kind of agree working with Delheim majority of of what we do is at Delheim uh, vineyards buying grapes from them making wine there and storing it there and distribute from there so basically Delheim is our base and um, home for us for our production and then we buy that's so that's Stellenbosch so we buy from two other farms in Stellenbosch and then we get a bit of Elgin so because I, I think looking at our like Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc it's grapes are from Stellenbosch but then we add a bit of Elgin because mm-hmm. it's a different style it's a different character that we pick up there so we're trying to create this complexity of your in, in the wine and so with the reds they all come from Stellenbosch good to know yeah. Very good to know indeed. At the moment, where outside of South Africa um, are your wines available? So our biggest market is the US, um, followed by the UK, then Japan. And we are, I think there are about five or six countries in Europe. We've got uh, Germany, Netherlands, we just got um, Belgium now, and we've got Switzerland, Sweden, and we've got Norway. 
Uh, oh gosh, I hope I'm not leaving anyone behind. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, in the continent, we've got Rwanda, we've got Botswana, we've got Swaziland. We're working on Kenya and we're hoping to get to Nigeria at some point. That's an impressive footprint, I must say, in the space of time that you've been on your own doing your own thing. To have that footprint is that's hard work. It is absolutely hard work. I think if when I look back when I started the company, there are people I stopped and asked them questions. Um, I remember we were at Stellenbosch Wine Festival at Kutzenberg. Um, Ken Forrest was just walking past, I stopped him. And then, you know, when you're asking someone a question and you, it's like you're running behind the person. And I said, just give me one advice. Um, I'm starting my own brand, but just give me, I just want one. And he said, never, he like literally stopped abruptly. And then he looked at me in the eyes and said, never allow anybody to tell you what your value is. Because when they're going to tell you what the value for wine is, they're telling you what your worth is. And I was like, hmm, okay. And I applied that immediately because I was having another struggle somewhere which, where I was trying to sell the wine. And someone was like, no, but this wine should be. And I said, no, that means you're not the market. I need to look for someone who's going to understand who we are. And I had also asked um, Anthony from Hamilton Russells. And he said to me, go wherever your wine goes. And that's what I do. And yes, you know, I'm, I'm like always on the road. I just came back from London. I'm always, always on the road. Um, wherever our wine is, I'm there promoting, working with, enjoying the wine with the people on the ground and meeting our customers, meeting the Aslina family. And so it's just, it, it's that constant, some they call it constant parting, but it's constant, you know, conversation with our people. You know, it's, you're absolutely right, just for the listeners. She's very hard to tie down. We've been trying to do this podcast for for months. <laughs> because you are traveling, but you're supporting your importers, the buyers who, who, who carry your wines in these markets. And that's incredibly important. And also, you know, you've got a team here that you're building up, but you've pretty much built up this business single-handedly, which is no mean feat, that's for sure. I wouldn't you- say single-handedly. Okay. Well, maybe vi- for the vision, absolutely. But I think um, one thing I learned from um, my boss when I was working at Stelikai was um, when he hired me, he just decided to trust and say, go ahead and do it. So that's what I've done, is to trust. Mm-hmm. So when I started the company, um, okay, well, I did one year I was on my own and then having my mentors you know guiding me on certain things on things um and I hired a student from PYDA fresh from <laughs> he had never done anything and I was like oh listen by the way we don't have a website we don't have social media you know so you need to create that and then I walked out and then I left I went out of the country <laughs> and and he did it he learned he walked he and all I did was like, these are the people I work with. Da, 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 da. Introduce him to the people and said, if you need help, I'm I, out. You uh, know. So uh, and, and 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 I realized because I was doing that because I knew that it worked for me mm-hmm. when it was done to me. I know that not everybody is the same, but some people they need that so that they can. Because it's so nice when you've started something from scratch. I'm like, yes, I did it. You know. And, and and to say I did it single-handed, you know, I've got family, you know, friends, where on days where I would be like, I don't feel like waking up and working. And then one of them will tell me, no, you don't have a trust fund. And then we're like, damn, do I really have to wake up and work? You know? yeah. They're like, no, you're not a trust fund, baby. So just go to work. You know? Nothing like friends and family to bring us back to reality when we need it. And that's why people say, who, ne- who needs enemies? <laughs> Exactly. So uh, you mentioned not having any knowledge of wine before you started this. Can you remember that first time you drank wine? What, 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 What stands out from that moment for you? First time I had wine. That was very tricky. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I always salute people. Um, I'm going to call the sommeliers, the wine, what not you want to call them. Because what they do, they, they will tell you all the characters of the wine. They, will, they make it all exciting and nice. So if you've never tasted wine, you're thinking, oh, that's going to be delicious. 
and then you take a sip and you realize that no man this is horrible are we tasting the same thing are we because i remember the first time um the guy who recruited us Jablani, he was tasting and talking about plums and fruits and i'm thinking this is going to be delicious and then i took a sip and i was like damn that's the most horrible thing i've ever had it was horrible but when I started obviously working part-time as a student at Delheim and then I learned about one and I got excited and then I started to enjoy it. So, yeah. Yes, I suppose one can say wine is an acquired taste, especially, and I'm presuming that that wine you tasted, that first one was probably something dry and not so sweet. Right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so it's not really the best way of introducing a product. You know, wine, generally the, 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 the root is start with something sweeter and then drop, you know, yeah. 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 But, but even though that's like you, you're supposed to start with something sweeter and move along, interestingly, the very first one that I said I like mm-hmm. when I was working at Delham, the first one that I was like, damn, I love this, it was a Shiraz. But obviously, I had been tasting different wine, the sweets and whatnot. But the very first one that I remember it was a Shiraz 99. But I remember having it, and I was like, "Oh, this is amazing!" Mm. So yeah, your, it becomes my your, wine. Yeah, your aha moment was no, that. Exactly, my aha moment was that. Very cool. So you travel abroad a lot, and presumably. You taste other wines from other countries. Are there any countries' wines that really stand out for you that you think, wow, this is kind of not necessarily what you aspire to, but if you had to drink wine other than your own and South African wine, this is kind of, this would this would work for you? I was going to be saying with your question that, you know what, I don't think anything beats South Africa. But then you've just said, okay, if then I can't have South Africa, uh, I'm not allowed to choose South African wine because I'll tr- always choose South African wines. But if I'm not allowed to choose South African wines, I'll choose an Italian wine. I'm a fan of Sangiovese. And for me, Sangiovese speaks to me in terms of its earthiness, nature, and, and everything else. It takes me to my childhood every time I taste it, irrespective of where. So, um, yeah. Coming back to your wines, um, of the six wines, which wine is your most expensive and, and what is in it? So our most expensive is our MCC. Mm-hmm. Well, to some that's not really expensive, but <laughs> it's our MCC. It's been on the lease um, in the bottle uh, for five years. So, you know, the minimum is three years. So we kept it for five years and we're still selling the 2016. And it's not a lot, really. It's about 410 rand. So it's not really, yeah. It's a decent price for for the market. There's a a decent price. um, But looking at what it is, really, like I've had people tasting it um, and saying, oh, this is a good value, Mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, uh, I remember when I was in, um, in, uh, in London, seeing the price of it at a restaurant and i was like lovely <laughs> <laughs> and tell me Ntiki, in terms of uh, the grapes that are used in that mcc and which varieties and grapes are in this cup classic it's chardonnay so we've got 100 percent chardonnay it's from franchuk valley and as you know franchuk and it's chardonnays and all because it's cool it's all yeah very nice very nice um which of the wines in the cellar at the moment are giving you the most joy so not quite the question of which is your favorite but right now if you had to walk into the cellar and open a tank or use the thief to to get some out of a a barrel which one is the one that kind of is giving you goosebumps right now cabinet always played a game with me (laughs) cabinet sauvignon and petit vedo they always like when i walk into a into the cellar i want to taste the 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 petit vedo when i walk into the cellar i want to go straight in and taste the, the 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 cabinet sauvignon then i'll taste the rest but those are the ones that i start with mm-hmm. yeah and do you believe in a perfect variety what is a perfect variety we nature most the grapes are natural it's all nature so what 
if you want to say, of course, nature is, I don't know what you can call it. So I wouldn't say there is a perfect variety now. And what is your opinion on wine critics and competitions and wine scoring, that kind of thing? You know, my, my favorite people in life are the buyers, the consumers. <laughs> Those are my favorites. Um, critics, um, they are they are there for a reason. But at the same time, is that an individual's, um, what do you call it, opinion? Um, unfortunately, the consumer want to know that. They want to follow that. And, you know, they've got their people that they trust. But um, I think it's a, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me it is important when they know as they criticize the wine, they're tasting the wine, with what is their intention? Is it to build or to break? Because mm. that's the key in the line where, you know, it's like, are you building? Is your aim you're tasting to critique, to build, or to break. That's a very valid point, a really valid point, and certainly one that gives a lot of food for thought. So tell me, in terms of yourself and what you enjoy, what do you generally find you drink? Cup of white wine, red wine, where does your heart lie? Oh, no, it depends. It really, really depends. Um, when I get home, that two wines are easily open. Cabernet are easily open because I don't have to think. Open it, have a glass, you know. Um, but that's an Aslina cab. Um, but if it's outside that, I need to taste because they are different styles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we've got our skin contact in. I'm currently not allowed to take it because every time I make every excuse, every excuse to have a glass of Shannon. Like, I'll be like, no, but guys, I need to taste it because we've still been experimenting. This is our third vintage. And then they go, nope. I'm like, but guys, you know, I'm always having excuses. So they're like, no, but this is the one for sale. So you can buy it. Oh, no. They, they've made, especially with the MCC, they've made me buy it when I wanted it. I was like, oh. they're like, no, we don't have enough. So you're going to pay full price. I was like, you know what? Wow. Yeah. Who are these people? My colleagues, they're so tired. They're hard on me. Like, they're really, truly really hard on me. But also, I'm like, you know, that's, they've done their costing. They've done their, you know, their, they've got their budget. They've got their targets. So if I'm going to be taking from what they want, mm -hmm. then it's a problem. That's fair. So, respecting that. Yeah, I think that's fair. Tell me, do you have any good luck rituals for when harvest is about to start or something that you do with your harvest team or in the cellar that's kind of like, you know, some people sing to the grapes or they talk to the grapes or they play music or you do a special dance in the cellar, anything like that? No, I don't have anything like that. It's just that when, we, when, when the cellar is busy and active, there has to be play, music playing and I love my traditional music. So, yeah. That must be a vibe. It is an absolute... Listening to Maskandi, it's a vibe. I love it. So... <clears throat> In a similar way to how some people read the future in tea leaves that are left behind in the bottom of a teacup, if you could read the future for Aslina wines in the sediment that is left over in a glass, what would they tell you about the future for Aslina? Jeez Louise, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a foreteller. <laughs> I can only talk about the visions of or the, what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping for. But yeah. other than that, the thought of, oh my word, no, I don't know. I know what we want. You know, we'd love to have a cellar. We'd love to have, but all those things are going to cost. We need to buy land. We need to, you know, so I know what we want. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm clear of the path of who we want to be. Yes. And the good thing is that everyone in the team is clear of our path. Mm -hmm. And everyone, we are in, in alignment of what we're working towards. So, yeah. 
people. That's incredibly important, having that focus and having that drive and having that vision of wh- what you want, where you want and what needs to be done in order to achieve that. I think that's incredibly important. Exactly, exactly. So that's why I'm hopeful that when you live here, you're going to be saying, how much do you need? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We'll have to find find an investor. Um, Nsiki, when you were a little girl, five years, six years old, growing yes. up in KZN, what did you want to be? I don't know at that time. All I remember at, around that time, I remember that I went, I used to go with the boys to take the cows to the Graceland. I remember that I did my ear piercing with a, what do you call it? with a thorn. That's all I remember. Did I want to be something? I don't even think I even got to that thought. No. But when I was seven, I had said I wanted to be a white person because I thought you studied to be that. And I thought, and my reason behind was because they have cars, they drive in their own businesses, and I wanted that. And so the interpretation of a child's mind Things that being umlungu. This is the word we, I wanted to be umlungu. Really, not to say what, but it was umlungu, and um, because they own businesses and da, da 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 da. So that's what I wanted to be. And fast forward, I guess that's who I am. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I think that's wow. That's so powerful. How the mind of a a young child. Mm, child. It's innocent. It's seeing things as they. Well, as they visually <laughs> appears, and then you interpret it your own way, and then when you get older, and you're like, oh yeah, no, even though this is what I was saying, but actually the meaning was not that. It that was the different. meaning. The meaning was different, and you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. Very, very, very cool. What do you do in your free time when you're not traveling the world, selling your wine, or in the vineyards, or in the cellar making your wine? What what do you do? What keeps you busy? <laughs> Currently, I'm studying. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, besides studying, um, I'm also a fan of hiking mountains. Okay. You know, looking at that mural there, it reminds me of my village. It's like I'm somewhere in KZN, and that's why I have it there. It takes me home every time I look at it. And so I always go up the mountains here because it's serene, it's nature. I'm a nature person and I always need that to feed my soul. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and I, read, I love reading fiction books. Oh. So I'll read fiction, or I'll read an educational book, or I'll read a... But, yeah, everything's got its own time and, yeah. Good. Do you ever switch off? I love sleeping. I'm not sure if sleeping is switching off. Yeah then yeah I love sleeping it's kind of an important thing to do sleep but (laughs) like like a friend of mine who went on a road trip Mm -hmm. and she came back she said you know what I knew you my friend I thought I knew you but I realized I didn't I knew that you love sleeping but I didn't think that you can sleep while sitting on a chair and on a wooden chair and close your eyes and sleep and I was like yeah that's a skill in itself. Because, <laughs> like, 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 literally, I can just sit and like close my eyes and then I'm gone. That's pretty impressive. I wish I could have done that on the airplane <laughs> back home from Germany the other night. No, you can't sleep. It's difficult sometimes to sleep on a plane because of the turbulence, because your mind ends up playing games. Tell me about it. Um, music? Are you into music? What kind of music? If so, I listen to music. I love music. Um, I love Maskandi. Mm-hmm. Um, I, lo- I love any other kind of music, really. It depends if it speaks to me at that moment. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. What would you consider the best piece of advice you shared earlier how Ken Forrester and Anthony Hamilton Russell gave you some 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 tips on how to go about your establishing your business if you could give a piece of advice to the 21 year old or the 18 year old Nsiki what what advice would you give her 
think the 21 year old 18 year old Nsegi did exactly what she was supposed to do <laughs> i don't think she needed any advice at that because whatever advice i have it it, it 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 is something that i did to say you know what just it, it's not i don't know i use the word brave but it's a it's a let's go for it yeah go for it just go for it that's it follow your gut and do what you want to do very cool uh what would you say is your proudest achievement within your career to date is us sitting here on the couch in at aslina's tasting room <laughs> we've got a tasting room we've got a space you can come and visit so yeah it's amazing seeing you go from strength to strength and i think the future is still so bright for you um a vip is photographed with a bottle of aslina on their table at a fancy schmancy restaurant mm. okay who is this vip that's drinking your wine alive or dead mm, alive hmm <laughs> I would have given you an easy one when you said dead, but now you're like alive. Oh my word! Alive. I don't know. I can't think of the person at the top of my head. Okay. I can't. Um, because when you say VIP, for me, VIP, it's really not about people who are known. I'm trying to think of the person that. No, it's difficult to Or think. a celebrity even. Nah. Nah. Not celebrity. Okay. Not a celebrity. I'm thinking of a person that I feel lives by certain values. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, she's dead though. No, I was thinking about also. Okay. <laughs> okay, well let me ask the next question then. If you could share a bottle of wine, any bottle of wine from anywhere in the world with anyone alive or dead. Who would it be and what wine will you be drinking? I took my grandmother. I took my grandmother and we'll actually drink umsasan. That makes perfect sense. I mean, why not? My grandmother, yeah. Mm-hmm. What sort of wines do you think will be drunk in the world in the year 2300? Um I think as much as I don't know what wine it will be, but there will still be the base wines, the base where we are right now. We'll get these kinds of wine, but then there'll be this thing that will be oh, let me not call it thing, goodness. There'll be these wines that are completely different from whatever we've known. and that would be probably hype at that time. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves, um, you know, how climate change affects us, where it's grown, all of these things that come into play. Yeah, but it, it's also it's climate change and it's also obviously the requirements and and the change of the people drinking wine. forcing directions of what actually how we should behave as producers which is good mm-hmm. in a way yeah it's totally good i mean you can't just keep doing the same thing that'll get yeah. boring <laughs> okay name three wines that you would take with you to a deserted island any three wines in the world what would you take with you um i'll take the chenin blanc <laughs> my skin fermented chenin blanc i'll take the uh miss mc which is our mcc mm-hmm. then i'll take him sasan those are the three wines that most of the time i'm not allowed to have because i get when i want it i have to pay for it sometimes and i'm like no guys but no like no you're not having and you want to drink the good stuff so why not why not now they say sometimes if i want it i must pay for it so i have to say oh, no i'm having a po- an appointment i'm having a meeting <laughs> Tell me in Tiki, what is a winemaking area or region in the world that you'd still love to explore? I'd love to actually get to know the history of Greece and taste the wines and like explore Greece and the Greek wine, the wine industry and Austria. 
those are the two that I'm really curious about. Um, also, they're not even that much spoken about. I always know about them when I'm in the U.S. and then trying to taste their wines and find it. So uh, th- those are the areas I'm really curious about. Very interesting regions indeed. Definitely, um, you know, worth, worth exploring for sure. We're just about done. Before I finish up, I'd like to play a game with you. So we're going to play a game where we pair a variety or a style of wine with music. So I will tell you the the style, the variety, and you're going to tell me which music genre or artist, for example, you would like to pair it with, you think it represents it. So I'd like to start with Skin Contact Chenin Blanc. Um, Skin Contact Chenin Blanc, that's a wild one. It's literally, don't box me. Um, Yes, I'm Chenin, but don't put me in a box. I'm, I'm this character. And... I think of Lady Gaga because damn she's such a character in terms of her dress codes when she's going to do the her things. She just go wild, she's wild. You know, she she's wild and I'm not I'm not a fan of her, but I always admire what when I see those things I'm like bravery. <laughs> you just go all out and be that. For sure. And no one tells her what to do or how to do it, which That's is the awesome. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay, let's go with Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon, um, people always call this wine, it's a playboy. And I still cannot remember the name of the singer, but the guy who sings Sexual Healing. I'm thinking of that song Mm -hmm. with this. (laughs) Because uh, when people talk about it's a playboy, I don't know what that means, but it's... It'll, it, it'll bring some sexual healing maybe for some people who, who need it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's finish off with a Riesling. Riesling, Riesling, Riesling. Riesling for me, it's a, it's a wine that is like, I feel like, it is a, like sort of straightforward wine. Obviously, depending on where you're getting it and whatnot. But it's at the same time the art that has all the mixed feelings or emotions in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, Ntiki, thank you so much for the opportunity to have this wonderful conversation with you. Before I sign off, please will you share where our listeners can find you online and on social media? Um, we've got our Instagram page, which is Aslina Wines. Oh, Aslina underscore Wines. And you can get us on www.aslinawines.com. That's our website. Or email us on info at aslinawines.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been my absolute pleasure chatting to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to a new episode of Wine Soundtrack South Africa. For details and updates, visit our website, winesoundtrack.com.